wealth building is a marathon and to run that race you need a strong foundation it does not happen overnight and nor does it happen by accident it literally happens with strategy intention and with the right guidance that is why in this video i am going to walk you through the fundamental things that you need to have in place to securely build generational wealth for you and your family if that is your goal before we jump in, you already know what to do. I need you to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any wealth building information. So many people think wealth happens overnight. So many people think that there is some magic. Maybe some people are lucky enough to have their families lead them some wealth. But for me, the buck stops here. You can build your own wealth by doing these things. The number one thing that you need to make sure of in the very beginning is you absolutely have to have an emergency fund. An emergency fund is where you have at least three to six months of your living expenses in a savings account, in a shoebox, in a sock. I don't care where it is. You need three to six months as an emergency fund because typically if something happens, you can bounce back in a three to six month time period. Well, what would happen where I can have an emergency where I am going to need an emergency fund? What if someone passes away and you cannot go to work? Therefore, you stop getting paid. What if all of a sudden you have to take care of a sick child? What if you get laid off of your job and your unemployment doesn't start? There are so many things that can transpire that you don't even know about, which is why it's important to build an emergency fund. And you can do it by literally eliminating some of those little extra things that you pay for that you want, but you really don't need. That is your first starting point. Number two, pay off debt. Debt is this thing that is a noose around your neck. And I said noose around your neck, literally. You need to pay off debt. If you are sitting on credit card debt, I am going to say to you, you need to start to pay that debt off. Here's my model when it comes to credit card debt. If I cannot afford to buy it, then I don't need to put it on my credit card. Most of my expenditures are via my debit card or my American Express card that I have to pay off at the end of the month because I do not want to incur debt. Many times we are starting to incur debt thinking to ourselves, oh, I'll pay it off and then we don't pay it off. Now, I know there's times when you are building credit which is very important. So you're gonna have debt as you are building credit, but you have to make sure you are managing debt properly. So if you're sitting on a lot of debt, you need to start paying off your debt and you're gonna use what I call the snowball effect. Go with the smallest amount that you owe on a credit card, the smallest balance and start there first and go to the next balance and then to the next balance. But get that debt paid off because at the amount of interest that you're paying, it is never gonna be worth it to carry debt for a really long time living expenses. I know a lot of you out there will say, well, I'll just make more money so that I can pay for that next thing. Trust me, been there, done all of that. There's no new tricks, just new terms. You wanna make sure that you control your living expenses and it might require you to humble yourself. Your living expenses really should not exceed more than 75% of what it is that you make. And if you're operating in my world, I'm gonna take you down to 50% of the amount of money that you make. Get your living expenses under control. Your primary living expense, of course, is food and shit shelter then it's a vehicle but trust me when i tell you oatmeal is better than no meal driving to work in a high-end vehicle looks good but it's not good for your pocketbook squeeze down into the least expensive vehicle that you can afford and get your living expenses under control too many of us are living beyond our means too many of us are one day one week or two weeks away from being put out on the street Take your living expenses down so that you can start to save money. The fourth thing that I want you to do is focus on retirement. And do not put in my comments, well, I don't need to think about retirement. I'm only 28, I'm 31, or I'm never gonna retire. Don't even attempt to do that. 
at some point you may choose to retire and retirement looks different to every single person. Retirement may be, I may not go to work from nine to five anymore. Retirement may be, I don't choose to work my business every single day. I choose to travel and do various things, but you want to make sure that right now today you're thinking about your retirement and start putting away money in retirement because you have two things on your side. You have time, right? Years, time, and you have a compounding of interest over time. It doesn't take a lot of money to start saving for retirement, but what it does take is to start saving for retirement. Start right now. If you are listening to me speak, I don't care if you're 21, 18, or 71, start setting aside money for retirement and make sure that you are following my advice in the order in which I am giving it to you. Your retirement is very important, so set aside funds for retirement and do not say to me, Carla, my real estate is my retirement. It could be if on the day you get ready to retire, you're able to cash out refi or you're able to sell that piece of real estate. But what if on that day you can't make sure you set aside money for retirement? Kids college. Is it important to say for kids college? I think so. There is so much conversation out there right now as to whether college is important or whether college is not important. I am of the school that college is important to me. Why do I say that? Because it is another formation of life. It gives us an opportunity to go meet new people from different walks of life and to learn how to live together with others and to learn how to assimilate. It is to make connections. College is not always about going to get an education to get a good job. Let's stop that whole conversation. But you need to start thinking about what your kid's college is gonna look like even before you have children. There's so many ways to save for college and there's some taxable benefits in saving for college. You can set up 529 plans. There's a lot of things that you can do, but you wanna make sure that you're thinking about college because too many of you are sacrificing your retirement funds to put your kids through college now. So see, there's a sequence to making sure you're able to build wealth. You gotta stack in the proper order. It's almost like building a house. Do you put a roof on a house first or do you put down the foundation? Making sure you go in the proper order and the proper sequence is stabilizing a solid foundation for making sure you can not only acquire wealth, build wealth, but you can sustain wealth. Now, let's talk about building wealth. How do you do that? Once you have that emergency fund, once you have that debt paid off, once you have your living expenses under control, you got your retirement savings going, you are now setting aside for your kids college, you got all the bases covered, now it's time to build wealth. And how do we build wealth? We build wealth by acquiring income producing assets. What is an income producing asset? An income producing asset is something that you acquire that is going to produce income for you over time. As an example, going from a side hustle to an entrepreneur to a business owner where the business actually generates income, whether you're there or not. By acquiring real estate, owning real estate and getting rents, whether you're there or not. By investing in stocks and getting paid dividends, whether you're there or not. Building wealth requires the acquisition of income producing assets and maintaining those assets over time. So there's an old saying that if you can own the cow, you can always get milk. But if you sell the cow, you got to go out and purchase milk. When you acquire your assets, you want to make sure that you're holding on to your assets and that you're not liquidating your assets so that you can not only acquire wealth, you can sustain wealth and you can have generational wealth. Here's the thing, my friends, you now know better. You absolutely got to do better. Make sure you have that emergency fund, pay off that debt, get those living expenses together, make sure you're saving for retirement, set up your kid's college fund, acquire wealth and sustain wealth. And now that you know that, you're gonna go out and do that. You're also gonna go like, comment and subscribe so I can make sure I keep you updated on all things business, tax and wealth building.